Duo Fish Since the beginning of human history, sickness and disease of many varieties are known to have been responsible for enormous amounts of human death. Many today wonder what the next great pandemic will be, but perhaps we should look to past pandemics to understand what the future may hold. Number 15 Ebola A virus from very recent memory, Ebola virus has caused several outbreaks all originating in Africa since 1976. The first epidemic level of Ebola began after an outbreak started in Guinea just a little over a year ago in December of 2013 after a year old boy contracted Ebola at some point and spread the infection to his family members who were taking care of him. Since the initial infection in 2013, nearly 9,000 deaths have been attributed to the recent Ebola outbreak. A very small number when you realize that influenza can result in around 500,000 deaths each year. Not to mention the fact that cases of the virus being spread to first world countries are incredibly rare and don't result in widespread infections as Ebola is spread through contact with an infected person's bodily fluids. Number 14 Typhus Epidemic of 1847 Following the Great Potato Famine in Ireland, a mass exodus of immigrants from Ireland to the US and Canada followed as many tried to escape potential starvation. Unfortunately, at the time that this happened, disease control wasn't really a thing yet, and typhus along with other diseases spread at a very quick rate across the ships making their way to the Americas. Typhus is transferred by Rickettsia bacteria, which is carried by lice, making it a very easily spread disease. The symptoms of typhus are much like the flu, but include rash and delirium, eventually leading to death if not treated. To make matters worse, it can be a latent disease like chickenpox and may once again cause sickness decades later into a person's life. The final death toll was around 20,000 people once the epidemic ended in 1848. Number 13 The Great Plague of London Most people will claim that the Black Plague was the worst epidemic in history. However, most do not know that the bacteria which causes the plague, Yersinia pestis, is still around and causing small outbreaks of the plague today. In the year 1665, an epidemic of the Black Plague began sweeping throughout London, mostly in the bubonic form of the plague, and killed about two-thirds of those infected. Many people simply refer to the Black Plague as the bubonic plague, but that isn't necessarily correct as the Black Plague has three forms, the other two being pneumonic and septicemic, which actually have higher mortality rates. The Great Plague of London ended with nearly one-fourth of the population of London dead after just one year. This amounts to around 100,000 deaths, making it the fourth worst epidemic caused by Yersinia pestis. Number 12 2009 Swine Flu Pandemic Also known as H1N1, swine influenza has actually caused two pandemics and an epidemic in the past century. As it turns out, Swine flu actually spread from pigs to humans, making it a zoonotic disease spread across species. Many of you will remember the swine flu pandemic that happened just a few years ago in 2009, and the subsequent fear that rose around the spread of the swine flu and the possibility that millions could be killed by the virus. But it doesn't seem to have turned out so bad, right? How many people did you know that actually caught the virus, or even died from it? Well, you'll know exactly why it was a problem when I talk about the Spanish flu later on. Just know that there was a reason to worry. In the end, the swine flu claimed 285,000 lives, mostly in India and Asia. Number 11 The Great Plague of Milan Remember how I said that the Great Plague of London was the fourth worst epidemic of the Black Plague? Well, the plague that swept through Milan, Venice, Florence, and Verona in 1629 to 1631 was the third worst. The Thirty Years' War was ongoing during the time the plague swept through Italy due to Venetian troops retreating back to northern Italy and central Italy, spreading the plague that many had been infected with while at war. However, Milan did have some effective health measures such as quarantine in place, but once carnival season arrived, health measures were relaxed and the plague spread through the city like wildfire. By 1631, nearly one million lives had been claimed by the plague, cementing it as the third worst plague caused by Yersinia pestis. Number 10 The Hong Kong Flu In 1968, an antigenic shift in the H2N2 virus which caused the Asian flu outbreak occurred and spawned H3N2. If you're anything like me, antigenic shift makes you think of a virus mutating like you've read about in zombie fiction. That's not exactly the case though. Ever wonder what happens when a virus encounters the DNA of another virus in a cell? 
Apparently, some viruses have the scary ability to reassemble into a new strain of virus if they run into a person who has already been infected with a similar virus. Some poor soul in Hong Kong was infected at the wrong time and began spreading the new H3N2 strain into a rapidly growing city, resulting in the virus spreading around Asia and the globe in just under a year. One million lives were claimed by H3N2 in just over a year, and the virus is now a common seasonal strain of flu. Number 9 The Russian Flu Also known as the 1889 to 1890 flu pandemic, the Russian flu was the first documented deadly strain of influenza A that began spreading in Russia and China in the year 1889, but quickly managed to spread to other parts of the world as well. The strain of influenza that caused the virus is currently unknown, with both H2N2 and H3N8 being theorized as culprits. Whatever the case, this strain of influenza quickly spread due to a lack of public health measures around the world and reached peak mortality in five weeks after the first initial case. The elderly were the largest population group affected by the virus, though even those of royal blood died, including Queen Victoria's grandson, Prince Albert Victor. In just one year, the strain of influenza killed over one million people, with several returns of the virus seen in the next decade. Number 8 The Asian Flu Getting tired of hearing influenza yet? <laughs> that's too bad. In 1956, the second worst outbreak of an influenza virus occurred, this time in the form of H2N2. Sticking true to its nickname, the Asian flu began in the Guizhou province of China. It is suspected that the virus was formed due to an antigenic shift after wild ducks infected an unfortunate human. H2N2 started near the end of the year in 1956 and had spread all over the globe by June of 1957. Millions were infected by the easily spread virus, and unfortunately, public health measures at the time weren't the best. A vaccine was actually produced in 1957 to contain the virus and was implemented to some success, but when the pandemic was over in 1958, an estimated 1 to 4 million deaths had occurred worldwide. Number 7 Cholera Pandemics Oddly enough, not washing your hands after using a toilet and disposing of human waste directly into rivers and oceans without treatment where seafood can pick it up and spread cholera was a very bad idea. Unlike many other diseases, cholera only causes disease in humans. Lucky us! Cholera infection is caused due to the bacterium Vibrio cholerae, which is a rod-shaped bacteria that causes instant intestinal distress after ingestion. Since 1816, there have been seven major pandemics in total in which millions of people were infected and died. Knowledge of disease was so poor during the first outbreaks that there were even city notices instructing people to avoid drinking boiled water and even the consumption of raw fruits and vegetables. We've come a long way. The death toll of cholera is estimated to be anywhere from 40 to 50 million people. That's the current population of South Korea. Number 6 HIV and AIDS What makes HIV so scary is how quickly it spread through a developed country like America. HIV is a small retrovirus that infects helper T cells, leading to AIDS when the levels of T cells begin to fall. When the number of T cells in the body falls to critical levels, bacteria that were easily defended against take over the body. HIV is theorized to have appeared when a much weaker retrovirus, SIV, was spread to humans in the late 1950s. No, that does not mean SIV was a result of a romantic pairing between a primate and a human. It was most likely due to fluid entering a wound leading to that pesky antigenic shift. AIDS was the number one cause of death in the US from 1994 to 1995, with 1 1.2 million deaths accounted for in America alone. As for the rest of the world, it is believed that anywhere from 15 to 45 million people have died as a result of AIDS, many of them children infected at birth. Number 5 The Plague of Justinian Here we are at the first terrible pandemic in history, caused by that little rascal that never wants to stay down, Yersinia Pestis. The Byzantine Empire was currently in the midst of warring and expanding and thus needed food for their people. So, grain was imported from Egypt. Unfortunately, rats infected with fleas carrying the Black Plague were also traveling with the grain. Long story short, the plague spread through the Mediterranean in the year 541 and wiped out 25% of the people living there, amounting to anywhere between 25 to 30 million people. 
Emperor Justinian I was actually infected with the disease, but managed to survive. But even so, the plague was named after him because he was ruling at the time. Number 4 The Spanish Flu I promise, this is the last time I'll talk about influenza. Remember how I said that there was a reason to worry about the swine flu earlier? Well, here's why. The world's population in 1918 was just a little less than 2 billion people. Spanish flu infected 500 million of those people, meaning that more than a fourth of the world's population was infected by the virus. 50 to 100 million people died due to H1N1, the same strain of virus as the swine flu, amounting to 2.5 to 5% of the world's population at the time. Dang. But why was this virus so deadly? Well, it was actually deadlier to those in their mid-20s to 30s, when the immune system is at its strongest. That doesn't really seem to make sense. Unless you know that people infected with the virus suffered a cytokine storm, which is essentially a meltdown of your immune system. The healthier you were, the more potentially deadly H1N1 was. Again, dang. Number 3 The Black Plague The Black Death, Bubonic Plague, the worst epidemic that you remember learning about in school. Everyone has heard about the Black Plague as well as the death and destruction that it brought upon Europe. Bubonic plague is the most familiar form of the disease that causes the black and necrotic skin we are so used to hearing about. To get the point across, how about I let Italian Renaissance writer Giovanni Boccaccio describe it? In men and women alike, it first betrayed itself by the emergence of certain tumors in the groin or armpits, some of which grew as large as a common apple, others as an egg. From the two said parts of the body, this deadly gavolciolo soon began to propagate and spread itself in all directions indifferently, after which, the form of the malady began to change. Those tumors he spoke about were actually swollen lymph nodes and were full of pus. Yeesh. 75 to 100 million people equating to 30 to 70 percent of Europe died due to the Black Plague. Number 2 Native American Plagues Many of you learned in your history class that Native Americans were heavily impacted by Western civilization as soon as contact was made with the majority of deaths occurring in native populations due to old world diseases such as smallpox that were brought to America by explorers. Smallpox is a pox virus that usually has a fatality rate of around 30%, but it was accompanied by other viruses and diseases when it arrived in the Americas. It is estimated that anywhere from 20 to 100 million Native Americans were around in 1492, but by 1650, the population had been reduced to just 6 million. That's a nearly unfathomable 60 to 90% of all Native Americans dying due to diseases that they had never encountered before. Number 1 Malaria The earliest bones of humans we can find have traces of malaria present when tested, meaning that since humans have existed, malaria was already infecting primates. Malaria infects 125 to 300 million people today, with 3.2 billion people at risk of contracting it. Malaria can lead to the deaths of over 1 million a year, most of the victims being children under the age of 10. This makes malaria a year-by-year -year pandemic that infects nearly 5% of the world's population. Because malaria kills mostly children, some scientists have estimated that malaria has killed half of all people who have ever lived. Somewhere upwards of 50 billion out of 108 billion people who have ever existed. All forms of malaria are caused by a parasite named Plasmonium, of which several species exist, causing various degrees of symptoms. The life cycle of Plasmodia has it infecting human liver cells and then the red blood cells where it reproduces and is then picked up by certain mosquitoes which spread malaria further. There is no vaccine for malaria as the nature of the parasite makes it extremely difficult to deal with. Though smallpox and polio have all but been eradicated entirely, malaria, the most consistently deadly pandemic of all time, still results in the deaths of nearly a million children each year. Please check out In a Nutshell for more information on how the immune system works. Till next video, ciao!